Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Uh, today's video, we're just knocking some stuff out and hopefully at the end of this we'll have the car running, we can take it for a ride around the block and figure out the brake issues. So, start off, the car's jacked up as you can see. Yeah, so today's video we're just gonna try and accomplish a couple things. Uh, one, getting the exhaust back on and getting that all plugged up. Also get the K&N air filter back on it. I'm not gonna show you the cleaning process. Eh, maybe I'll slap it in there a little bit. Add some coolant and hopefully take it around the block and uh, try and resolve that rear brake issue by slamming on the brakes and activating the ABS pump, I guess. And we'll see if that works. But first, gonna crawl under the car and try and get the exhaust in. And also while I'm under there, I'm gonna scout a route for the, <laughs> that rhymed, scout a route for the battery relocation project that I want to do. Uh, just to get the car to go around the block, I'm gonna put the battery back in the front. Uh, I was gonna try and make this video the battery relocation, but I kinda wanna get second opinions on where to put it, whether it's in the spare tire well, in the back of the trunk, put it in the center of the car, or put it on the side near the quarter panel. Hopefully I'll get some good insight into that and figure that out. But until then, we're gonna get this thing running. And then after I get it running, hopefully I get some new tires, get an alignment, maybe even get it tuned by then. And then do the battery relocation and the oil cooler installation. But we'll play it by ear. But I think that's probably the route I'm gonna end up going. Let me crawl under the car and start getting this exhaust together. All right guys, got the header, catalytic converter, to there put in. Now, if you want to get this long tube header kit, this is what it comes with, along with the long tube headers. I don't know how the shorty kit is, and I don't know how this works on the 0506, but if you just get the header kit and all this, it attaches to the stock exhaust. So if you don't want to change your exhaust, but you don't want to change this aspect, go for it. It actually sounds pretty friggin' good, but I decided to go with the SLP loudmouth. I'm gonna jack up the back of the car so I can get to this portion and we'll knock out the rest of this. All right guys, got the exhaust in. I just gotta button up some flanges and bolts, but uh, just a word of advice. Now I had this exhaust on to begin with, but I took it off obviously to do the car stuff. Mm, gotta do it. But when you're putting it back together, don't leave parts bolted together and connected to the exhaust and try and do it all one shot. That is a losing battle. Take everything apart. I, as I remember the directions, putting it together, put everything together loosely, get it up in place, then tighten it down. So that's just a word of advice from me to you in case you want to do this. So if you're going to put this exhaust in your car, it should work fine. But if you put a one piece drive shaft in, you have to cut some things out of the way. So I'll show you those things real quick right after I button this stuff up. I'll show you what you gotta do to have a one piece drive shaft. All right guys, so if you want a one piece drive shaft, you have to do cut a, several things out of the way. Now, this exhaust hanger has to get chopped out. As you can see right where my finger is, I had to cut it so it makes clearance on there. And also, if you look, let's see what I get up there. Right there, there was a bolt for the seat. You have to cut that down to make room for that. And then over here, this side's fine. You can get away with that, that's no problem. The other bolt, as you can see it right there. I can't really point at it, but you can see it dead center of the shot. You don't have to cut that one out. And also some of the, the heat shield, as you can see right there, I had to trim that out and there, as well as the other side here, as you can see by right there and there. So if you want one piece drive shaft, that's what you gotta do. And as you can see by this bolt, that's where one of the two part of the two-piece drive shaft went. That was the carrier bearing. So one part went straight to the transmission, intersected here, and from here, obviously goes to the differential. So yeah, that's some of the things you gotta do to get a one-piece drive shaft in. Uh, I just gotta button up, uh, looks like two more things real quick. 
Nope, nope, one more thing. Just gotta put that flange together. And that'll do it for the exhaust. And then we can move on to something else. All right, guys, just a quick update on what I did. I put the air filter on. Got some fluid in here. Did not add coolant yet because my neighbors just came home with a kid that was sleeping. So I'm going to start this thing up anyway, but I'm not going to run it too long. I just want to hear what the exhaust sounds like. Uh, battery's hooked up. It's back in the original spot. Update coming on the status of that. Getting relocated. But yeah, other than that, I just got to add coolant, which will be tomorrow because beating thunderstorms and running out of daylight. So let me fire this thing up and see what she sounds like. That was a little rowdy. Uh, I gotta adjust the throttle a little bit more. All right, guys, gonna try this again. I just adjusted the throttle a little bit more, so hopefully it's not as rowdy. Alright guys, I got this little line tied into the crossover tube and just kind of piecemealed it together into here. I'm not thrilled with it, but when this car goes down in the winter time to do the rear and the brakes, then I'm going to tear this all apart and make it all nice because it's kind of just flopping around everywhere. But that being said, let's put some coolant in and hope that this is not the weakest link because I think it might be, but we'll see. So let me put some coolant in and we'll figure that out. So far nothing's leaking. Uh, I may need another quart of uh, coolant, but I got two. See if that works. Okay guys, we'll fill up to there on two bottles of coolant I'm going to need more so I have to run to the store real quick and get that because this entire system was bled out the heater cores drained out the engine probably doesn't have shit in it right now and I'm going to top this off with some uh, automatic transmission fluid because apparently that's what you use for the power steering so stand by let me go to the store and get some more supplies all right guys had an issue with the uh, thermostat uh, the Mishimoto thermostat the gasket was super thin so it was actually leaking as you can tell right here this thing's just fly to shit and i don't know if you can really tell in here let's see if we can get in there this one's got ridges to see a lot better so good job mishimoto a part that belongs to this car does not fit check your stuff as you can see i had to take the fan out take some hoses out pain in the ass if you get a mishimoto thermostat Change out the gasket to a regular GM one. Should seal up a lot better. All right, guys, got some coolant in there. Fixed uh, Mishimoto's fuck up. And we're going to try and bleed the system now. Apparently I still have low coolant. I don't know how 
hell that is, and low fuel. But we're gonna let this thing run. Uh, I got the heat on full blast to try and open up the heater core to get the shit in there. And uh, we'll see how this goes. So far, no leaks. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, guys, uh, I guess it was a successful day. Uh, no check engine light, no oil leaks, no coolant leaks, aside from the thermostat housing, but put the original GM gasket in. It's holding up fine now. So, uh, I just gotta wait for the coolant to cool off and uh, adjust the level in the tank. As far as the cluster gauge goes inside the car, there is no check engine light. My traction control went off for some reason, but I don't know why that would be. I didn't press, I pressed the button, it wouldn't come back. Uh, my coolant gauge, it's saying I have low coolant. So I don't know the deal about that because I put a new tank in and it's got a new, I guess, level indicator in there. Or unless it's somewhere else on the engine that I don't know about. Gonna give it a few more startups, make sure everything's kosher. And then in the next video, I will take it out on the road. Now, I will say, while I was under the car putting the exhaust together, there's really no good way to run that battery relocation. Like running the cable under the car, I do not want to do that. Uh, it's too exposed and there's some spots where it becomes the low point and I, I really don't want that. So I think I'm just gonna skip that for now and maybe revisit that next winter when the car goes down and I'm putting the new rear in. You know, I'll have it up in the air. I'll hopefully have one of those quick jacks and I can easily get under the car because that is something I plan on purchasing. Yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. Uh, this thing sounds friggin' great. Like, yeah, this microphone doesn't do it justice, but this thing sounds awesome. I can't wait to get it tuned and then friggin' let it rip. That's, that's gonna be awesome. So yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, you know the deal, and I'll see you kids in the next one.